So as we are waiting for Joy, I will give you a little glimpse of what we're doing today. Um, Joy is relatively new to Gospel Gal. Um, we are going to introduce and um, provide you with a statement of purpose and also just give you a little glimpse of what we are doing on social media and on the internet. So welcome, Joy. Thank you for uh, joining this today. So before um, Joy speaks about what, what we're doing, I just wanted to kind of introduce myself. My name is Marissa Namir. I am Gospel Gal. I started the Gospel Gal blog in 2017 um, out of just interacting on Facebook. I wanted to have just a centralized database where I could store information and access it easily so um, that I could share it with others as they had questions. I get a lot of questions on social media um, regarding doctrine and theology and the gospel specifically. So it's been really encouraging to do that. Um, anyway, like I said, I'm Marissa. I live in the Atlanta suburbs, um, or at least will for the next several months. Um, I'm the wife of Mark, mother of Mariel, who is 29. Morgan, who is 26, and Meredith, who's 21. I'm a member of a Reformation Anglican Church in North Florida, where we will be residing, Lord willing, as soon as our house is finished construction. Excited to go and be a part of the church life there more fully. I'm a licensed counselor, advocate for abused individuals, and a Bible study facilitator, both on the internet and for my local church. My passion is to help weary sinners find rest and peace in, and peace in Christ. Um, as I said, Gospel Gal blog was started in 2017. And then spinning off of that, we started Church Chats with Gospel Gal, a podcast in 2020. Um, the blog is a gospel-focused blog for sinners like you and me <laughs> who are weary and heavy laden. Jesus promises to all those who come to him that we will find rest. So let us labor to enter into that rest. Joy, why is it labor to enter into rest? Talk to us about that for a minute. Um, because our default is to resist resting, attempting to work to gain God's approval. Adam did so in the garden after he fell. And although he was created perfect in a perfect environment in perfect relationship to all creation and to God, he chose to rebel and to die along with his posterity. Being aware of his guilt and shame, he attempted to cover himself with fig leaves, just as we all do, when we try to work for our salvation or favor with God, but it was no good. God came, found Adam in his nakedness, and slaughtered an animal, representing a covering for Adam's sin and representing a promise. Yeah, in, in the garden, God promised Adam and Eve that Eve's descendant would crush the serpent's head, the serpent who had deceived her into doing what God had forbidden. That descendant was Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The apostle reminds us of what this promised serpent crusher, Jesus Christ, accomplished. He says in his first letter to the Corinthians, for I delivered to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. So he really did fulfill the promise that was made to our first parents. And he really did live, live righteously in our place. He received the full wrath of God that we deserved. Receiving the curse for us, he was buried. And then because his sacrifice satisfied for all our sin, he rose again in accordance with all the Old Testament scripture. This verified that the once for all sacrifice 
was well pleasing to God the Father. Now we have peace with God and can rest in all these good works, not ours, but Christ's. So join us as we share the message of rest and peace that Jesus Christ provided for us on the Gospel Gal blog and church chats. Joy, why don't you um, introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit more about what Gospel Gal is doing. Sure. Um, so my name is Joy and I joined the Gospel Gal blog as a contributor back in 2020. And I met Marissa in the wonderful world of social media. And I got to know her more intimately on an online prayer group as well as a catechism review group that she was leading. And I quickly found that we were very much like-minded in our passion to elevate the sufficiency of Christ and the gospel in daily living, and specifically for the weary and struggling believer. When she asked me to be a contributor, I couldn't resist. And I'm really excited to work with her in bringing the message of the gospel to all who will hear. Um, so right now, I'm currently a member of a URCNA congregation that also emphasizes the sufficiency of Christ and the gospel for the believer. And then one of my the three favorite words that I love to hear is Christ for you. And they are the most precious words that we can hear, especially when we are struggling with our sin and misery while living in a fallen world. And I hope to show through our content that the gospel really is for you to enjoy. And I know many Christians have struggled as I have with the assurance of God's underlying disposition towards them. And my hope is that through gospel gals, you can see the immeasurable riches of God's kindness through the knowledge of Jesus Christ and the gospel. And I pray that those who read and interact with gospel gals would be eternally assured of Christ's kindness in the gospel. Um, so a little bit more about our Church Chats with Gospel Gals podcast. Um, it is a podcast where regular Christians discuss matters that concern the church. And the podcast is also associated with the Gospel Gals blog. All of the content is written and talked about from a perspective of a lay person and is geared to showing how Reformation theology can have a practical impact on daily life. Our episodes have covered spiritual abuse, racism and the thirst for human justice, gospel awakenings, and how to comfort and help a friend in times of sorrow. And our aim for all of our content is to approach each topic from a gospel-centered lens and to show how confidence in the gospel impacts how we approach our friendships, our churches, and how we deal with the many social issues plaguing our culture today. So you can find us on the following platforms. Uh, we have Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. And our handle information can be found at www.gospelgalblog.blogspot.com on the Gospel Gals intro and statement of purpose page. Thank you for introducing all that. Yes, we are pretty active on social media. As Joy has said, um, we are on Instagram, which she recently started. Um, we are on Twitter, which is a little less frequented, but... We are out there too. Of course, we have our Facebook pages, Gospel Gal. And then we also have a page called Church Chats with Gospel Gal. So you can find us fairly easily. Um, and hopefully you'll be encouraged by what we're doing. We'd love to hear from you. And Joy, I just want to say how grateful I am for you, for your friendship and your participation. It has been just such an incredible blessing. I love to hear what you have to say, and especially where it concerns the gospel. And thank you for your encouragement and giving um, your readers and listeners Christ. Well, thank you. Thank you for asking me. And I'm also been encouraged and blessed by our friendship too. And I really enjoyed getting to meet you in person for the first time a few weeks ago. That was awesome. That was so amazing. I always appreciate your kindness and your generosity and I can't wait to meet you in person again and give you a big bear hug. Me too. Thank you. And thank you to all our listeners and readers. Again, um, feel free to contact us. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, our prayer for you is gospel blessings. We know that the Lord is so generous and kind, and we pray that you'll find peace and rest in him. Amen.